Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah and very good morning to all. Alright, so for Form 5 syllabus, okay, Form 5 syllabus physics. Um, so this is uh, the first theme, Newtonian mechanics. So we have two chapter in this theme. So we have uh, forces and motion, forces and motion two. Okay, another one is pressure. Okay, forces and motion two. There are only uh, four subtopic. So we have, you can see here, uh, resultant force, resolution of forces, forces in equilibrium, and elasticity. Okay, so today we will look at this. This uh, resultant force. If we have time, uh, then we will look at resolution of force. Okay. So this is your DSKP, uh, KSSM. So the first one, uh, resultant force, the first subtopic, resultant force. So the learning standard for this, the first one is describe what is resultant force and then determine the resultant force. So these are the suggested activity. Okay, so calculate resultant force of two forces that act upon object on a plane in same direction, opposite direction, perpendicular to each other, and then at different angle, okay, a different angle. So it means that if same direction, it will be like this, it's either to the right, both to the right, ataupun uh, both to the left, or both upward or both downward that is same direction opposite direction will be one to the right the other one to the left or we rotate it lah uh, boleh rotate oh this one i cannot can i rotate or not rotate 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 yeah i don't know how to rotate Resize, resize. Ah, okay, it's either like this or like like this. Okay, so this is opposite direction. But normally we look at horizontal or vertical like that. Nah. Then uh, perpendicular will be like this. Perpendicular will be 90 degree to each other. Okay, uh, and then the fourth one is at an angle means uh, one force like this, the other one may be like this. So there is an angle. So it means that the angle is not 90 degree. It can be 120, it can be 40 degree and so on. Okay, so there are four cases now. Okay, then uh, this is still in the first subtopic. Eh? Um, so we determine the resultant force when the object is stationary moving in constant velocity constant acceleration then finally solve problem okay so i will strictly follow textbook so you can open your textbook also okay your textbook eh? Okay, so this is the first subtopic, resultant force. So this is um, a diagram showing uh, two participants in tug of war. You can see uh, FA, the label like this, FA, force acted by participant A and then force acted by participant B. Okay, so if let's say A pull with more force compared to B, which direction will the flag go? Left or right? If participant A pull with more force, which direction will uh, the flag go? This is the flag. Yeah, it will go to the left, okay? And then if let's say B is uh, stronger, so it means that the flag will move to the right. What if, it will, will there be any situation where the two participants pull in opposite direction, but then the flag does not move? What condition will that be? 
what I mean is how much force uh, uh, compare the force if let's say the flag will uh, is, is stationary in the middle okay all right good good yes yeah same force equal correct so if let's say if let's say uh, uh, participant a pull with 100 let's say 100 newton b also 100 newton okay so the flag will be stationary so in this case we can say that the net force acting on the system is zero okay so when the two forces acting in opposite direction same magnitude so we can say that the net force acting on the system is zero so when the net force is zero so the system uh, will be stationary so that's why the flag will not move if this is the situation understand now so this will be this is much i'm just logic lah, okay logic eh? logic what you uh, experience in your daily life okay look at this diagram uh, stationary this is what we discussed just now if let's say all right if let's say a b same magnitude but opposite direction so the flag will be stationary so we call this as zero net force when I say net force, I'm referring to resultant force. So net force is another term for resultant force. Eh? So when the net force is zero, the flag or the system will be stationary. Not that there is no force acting. They are force acting but same magnitude but opposite direction. Okay, look at this. So this diagram shows that the flag Move to the right. Why like that? Uh, this one also logic. Eh? So means that B acting greater force. So when B is more compared to A, so the flag will be moving to the right. Okay. So we can say that there is a resultant force. Okay. And the direction of the resultant force is to the right. Okay. So we can give magnitude to this. Eh? Let's say we just uh, add in number. So let's say uh, FB is 200 Newton and then FA is 50 Newton. What is the resultant force? Okay, so the resultant force in this case will be U minus it. So it means that to the right is more, right? So it means that resultant force I write as F net. Ne? So F net equal FB minus fa right so because a uh, uh, force is vector quantity eh? uh, so there, there is direction so in this case 200 actually plus minus 50 here should be plus okay but we put minus 50 here because the direction is opposite to 200 so we assume to the right is positive, to the left is negative. Okay, so in vector, when we calculate using vector, so it means that 200 plus uh, minus 50, so the magnitude of the net force is 150 Newton, same direction with 200. So here, you can see, right, 200 is positive. The answer here also positive. So it means that the direction will be following this which is to the right. Is that clear or not? Boleh, huh? uh, we can also draw the force by using um, arrow. Okay, arrow, just like this. Huh? So here, you can see, um, the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the force. So you can see that FA is shorter compared to FB. Okay, so it means that the magnitude of FB is bigger compared to A, FA. And then this is the resultant force. Understand? Huh? All right, next one. Okay, uh, opposite direction. So here, obvious, the, the flag move to the left. Okay, move to the left because FA is more compared to FB. Okay, so the resultant force is, um, let's say we just give value. Let's say here is 
um, 100 Newton. This is 20 Newton. So when you calculate F net, yeah, it will be Fa plus Fb, right? So Fa is to the left, so we can just put negative 100 plus Fb is to the right. Let's say we assume to the right is positive, so here is positive 20. So the answer is negative 80 Newton. So negative here doesn't mean the value is smaller. The negative here actually showing that the direction is following the left side. So it means that following this negative. You can see or not? What if I hum? Okay. Uh, so the example that we see, um, we just see, yeah, plus uh, is showing that the force are parallel. Okay. The direction of the force are parallel. Okay. Parallel but opposite. Okay, next one. Let's say, uh, class, cikgu, cikgu tambah, huh? let's say we add in one more friend here. Okay, pull. Let's say the force acted by this new friend is 200 Newton. Okay, guess what will happen? What happened class? If let's say another friend come in and then uh, exert force 200 Newton uh, to the right. Uh, yeah, so the flag will be moving to the right. Correct. Okay. So what is the resultant force in this case? What will be the total resultant force? 100 new, 120. 120 Newton. Which direction? Flag to the right. Okay. Good job. Huh? So when we calculate for this case, huh? F net means that the resultant force. So it will be equal to, let's say I name this as C, lah, F C. Huh? So it will be F A plus F B plus F C. All right. F A to the right, uh, to the left, so negative 100. FB to the right, so positive 20. Okay, I don't put a uh, bracket now. Huh? And then FC also to the right, so can put plus positive 200. Uh, so you use your mathematic lah. Uh, mathematic biasa. Okay, so the answer will be equal to 120 positive Newton. So when the when the value is positive like this, so it means that the direction is same as 20 and 200, which means to the right. Okay, so we can say that the resultant force is, the magnitude is 120 Newton, direction is to the right. Okay, so here it shows that when two force acting in the same direction, so we plus it, champo. But if let's say the force acting in opposite, so we minus. Is that clear or not? Jelasa? As long as same direction, we plus it. If let's say opposite direction, we need to minus. Same direction, it can be both upward. It can be both downward. Okay. Once you see same direction, the force magnitude should be just plus it. Okay. Huh? So can we proceed? Boleh, huh? All right, so uh, just like this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Forgot just now. So this is a definition for resultant force. It is in your textbook. Cikgu suka just follow your textbook. So resultant force. Okay, is the single force that represent vector sum of two or more forces acting on an object. Okay, so resultant force is a single force. Okay, a single force of the summation of vector force, uh, vector uh, of all the forces acting on the system. 
boleh ya? So that's why we say this is the resultant force just now lah. So the resultant force have magnitude, have direction. Okay, still in your textbook. So let's say we have two forces acting on object in same direction. Alright, 6 newton, 8 newton to the right. 6 newton to the right, 8 newton also to the right. So the resultant force will be like that. 6 plus 8, 14 newton. Direction to the right. Boleh ha? If can, then I just uh, go faster. And then the diagram here, uh, the example here is for two forces acting uh, on object in opposite direction. So we have 8 newton to the left, 6 newton to the right. So can see? Uh, so to the left, we assume, we just use negative sign. So then the final answer is negative 2 newton. So it followed to the left. All right, so the net force is 2 newton to the left, or you can just write F equal to negative 2 newton. The negative sign here represent direction is to the left. And you can also use this, but normally we don't draw like that. Uh, you can also use that method. Okay, so it means that there are three ways to write the resultant force. It can be like this. It can be using negative. It can be using arrow. Okay, and when we use arrow uh, like this, uh, uh, the length, uh, normally we use scale. Let's say 1 cm equal to 1 newton. So if let's say the length here is 2 cm, so it means 2 newton. Direction to the left. Clear? Alright, so this is the third one where the two forces acting on object but perpendicular to each other. Okay, uh, this one you can visualize like this. Let's say we have... Um, let's say we have a ball. Then there are two... Two... Let's say two boys. Uh, this is from the top view, eh, pandangan atas. Eh. So I just draw the head lah kepala. One boy, there is another boy. And then these two boys run to get run at the same time. Okay, and then they hit the ball. Means they kick the ball at the same time. So what happen is. Let's say this is boy A, boy B. Okay, so A kick the ball with 8 newton force. And then B kick the ball with 6 newton. So the ball is actually acted by two forces that is in 90 degree perpendicular. So as a result, okay, so the force acting acted by B will be like that. And then the force acted by A is like this. So the magnitude, okay, we just follow the question. Huh? So magnitude of force acted by A is 8 Newton, by B is 6 Newton. Okay, boleh faham? So cikgu padam this one. Okay, now if, if the two forces acting on the ball at the same time, but in different direction, which now is 90 degree. Now it's 90 degree. Yeah? And the magnitude also not the same. Can you guess which direction will the ball move? And how, um, how hard will the ball move? What I mean is, how much is the force acting on the, on the ball? So you need to determine the resultant force. Okay, uh, but this one need a bit of calculation. There are two ways. Huh? So one is by using diagram. Another one is by calculation. Okay, a simpler one will be using diagram. Okay, look at this. So now you can visualize already. Huh? So 6 Newton here and 8 Newton is actually force acted by two boys on a ball. Okay, uh, yeah, the direction is like that. So we want to determine 
what is the resultant force acting on the ball when two forces acting like this? So when it is 90 degree like this, what you can do will be to draw diagram like this. Okay, so you have a, um, a rectangle, okay, a rectangle. Then, then you draw this, okay, from this, the, the same uh, point, the diagonal, all right? So this diagonal represent the resultant force. So if you draw your diagram in scale, then you can measure the length of that F, the length of this. So the length here represent the magnitude of the force. Okay. If you draw your diagram in scale. So let's say, let's say uh, one, okay, you need to write your scale first. Let's say one cm, one cm equal to um, one newton. Okay. So it means that this six newton will be, 6 cm in length and then the 8 newton will be 8 cm in length right so you just complete your rectangle then you draw uh, the diagonal so you measure the diagonal you measure this so the length uh, you times uh, uh, the length let's say you get katakana uh, uh, 10 cm so it will be equal to 10 newton okay so is there any other method to determine F? Okay, apart from drawing diagram. Can we calculate or not? If you want to calculate, what theorem can we use? So here also 6, this side also 6 Newton. This side also 8 Newton. So any other, do, do we have any theorem to calculate this? Any formula? So if I draw like this, huh? This is a right angle triangle. So it means that we can use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, good, Shahira. Betul. Pythagoras theorem. This is 90 degree. Okay. So 6, 8. Uh, so use Pythagoras theorem. Just like this. Boleh, ha? Okay, so it means that you can determine the magnitude of the force by using uh, Pythagoras theorem. So it means that here, if you draw the diagram, you will get uh, the length of F will be uh, 10 cm. Okay, 10 cm. And you refer back to the scale that you have. All right, so this is the scale, right? Okay, so if you have 10 cm, so the magnitude of the force is actually 10 newton. You can calculate also like that. But then... Um, we know that resultant force also is a, a vector quantity. Eh? It has magnitude and direction. So the direction, if you draw, so the direction will be represented by the arrow. So it means that like this. Okay, so this is the direction. And then if you draw your diagram, you can measure this angle. Okay, and label it. Okay, so that we know exactly uh, how much um, apa kecondongan na, is the, the 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 resultant force. How much slanting? Uh, how much is the angle? But if let's say you want to use calculation, also can here. We use tangent. Okay, yeah, right. Uh, so if let's say you want to know what is theta, since you have 6, you have 8 Newton, 6 Newton, you can just use the number and you calculate uh, tangent theta. So it will be opposite divided by uh, adjacent. Okay, 
So 6 divided by 8, like this. So from here, you can determine theta. The angle is 36.9. So it means that this angle is equal to 36.9. So when you draw your diagram uh, the, the and you measure it, here I think it will be around 37. So this is also correct if you draw a diagram. But if you if you use calculation method, you need to calculate it correctly. Lah. Uh, mesti tepat lah if you use calculation method. But if let's say diagram, we also accept uh, round of 30, 37 degree. Okay. Boleh? And then uh, if let's say you don't want this angle, you can also use this angle. Boleh. Uh, this one also can. Okay, it will be 90 minus 37 just now lah here. So if let's say you use this angle by calculation, it will be, by calculation, let's say this one is theta just now, right? So here you can use other symbol, let's say alpha. So tangent alpha is equal to 8 divided by 6. Okay. So use your cal your calculator determine theta uh, 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 alpha. So this alpha will be ninety minus thirty seven. Okay, boleh? Can or not? Ada soalan so far? No question. Nah? All right. So far, uh, we already covered. Um, yeah. Look at the DS, DSKP. Okay, calculate resultant force, act on object, same direction already, this one already, opposite direction okay, perpendicular also okay. Okay, uh, the third, the fourth one, uh, at an angle. Okay, so this one normally we use uh, um, uh, diagram, diagram. Okay, here. Two forces acting on object uh, that are not perpendicular means that there are angle in between. The angle is not 90 degrees. So means that other angle, it can be less than 90, it can be more than 90. Just like this, the angle alpha here is less than 90. How do I know that? Because 90 is like this. Nah? This is 90. Okay. Now, so if you have, okay, example, lah. Hmm. What example? Katakan, let's say you have a boat. Is that a boat? All right, let's say you have a boat and then being pulled by another two small boat. Small boat. Pull big boat like that. Which direction will this... Um, uh, boat go. Uh, again, we need to determine the resultant force. Lah. Okay. Uh, if let's say following example of the ball just now, right? So you have a ball kicked by two boys, different direction, but not 90 degree uh, like that. So it means that, <laughs> so it means that like this. Lah. Okay, one and then this one will be like that. So there is an angle in between. So for this case, we cannot use Pythagoras theorem because the when you draw, uh, you will not get the right angle triangle. So we need to use another method, what we call as parallelogram method. Uh, here. Uh, we can also use triangle method. There are two methods. Okay. A simpler one will be triangle method. But both will be drawing, okay? Drawing. All right. So if let's say you want to use um, triangle method, or should I explain pyrogram method first? I, I explain pyrogram method first. Huh? So when you want to use pyrogram method, the two forces, okay, F1, F2, must come up from the same point. Like this.
this is the point. And can see that the arrow F2 is out, okay, from that point. Arrow F1 also out from that point. Can see it? So, uh, but the, di the diagram uh, must be drawn in scale. Lah. So, you need to set your scale first. Let's say, just like just now, lah, 1 cm, 1 cm equal to maybe 10 newton. It depends on the question. Lah. Okay, let's say they give you this as uh, 100 newton. This one as um, 500 newton. Okay, so you can use 1 cm, 10 newton or 1 cm, 5 newton like that. Lah. Okay, then uh, the angle here uh, must be measured accurately so let's say this is 60 degree okay so you must measure the angle accurately it must be 60 degree so when you draw the diagram okay when you draw the diagram you can start from one point okay like that and draw f1 first so f1 just now is 500 so means that you draw it by um 500 berapa cm 50 cm will not be logic, kan? Cikgu tukar lah. I change the value. Easier value for you. Katakan. Oh, we change the scale. So, let's say here we use 100. 1 cm 100 newton okay 1 cm 100 newton ataupun uh, 1 cm 50 newton so if 100 newton berapa cm If 1 cm is 50 newton, so 100 cm, 100 newton, berapa cm? 2 cm, okay, good. If 500 newton, 500 newton here, berapa cm? 100 newton is 2 cm. When we draw diagram later, so the 500 newton, 10 cm. Okay, good. 10 cm. Because we are using the same scale. Lah. So this is the scale that we have. This scale, you can set yourself. Okay, any value as long as uh, the diagram that you draw is not too small and not too big. Okay. All right. So when you draw the diagram, you start with you draw one first. Okay, let's say the easier one to draw will be the horizontal. Lah, huh? So we draw F1. So F1 is 500 Newton, which is 10 cm. So you measure 10 cm. Start, just put one tandakan like that. Nah. Then you measure 10 cm. So this 10 cm represent 500 Newton according to your scale. You put arrow. Like that. The arrow can be draw at the end like this. Can be draw in the middle. Uh, cikgu, I love to draw in the middle. Yeah, because sometimes, because if let's say di hujung later bila sambung can't really see. So I prefer to draw in the middle like this. Okay. Then uh, the second force, okay, which is F2, F2, the angle in between them are 60. So you need to measure from horizontal. This is horizontal lah. So you measure horizontal 60. So you use your protector, okay? Tandakan, let's say, you measure 60 degree. Then you draw F2. So F2 should be only, berapa cm? 2 cm. Like that. Put arrow, okay? So you already draw in scale. So this is 2 cm that represent 100 newton. Alright. Then uh, you can use your compass um, 
to determine this point. Have you learned in your maths? So you need to, to use your compass, tandakan here, and then you place yang tajam here, right? Then finally you will get satu tanda here. And then you put your uh, compass here and then tandakan like that. Okay, so means that you have your X. Then sambung. Okay, not? So, tandakan lah, then you get this. In class, cikgu akan ajar lebih detail lah. Huh? So, it means that you actually create, creating a parallelogram. Okay, so the resultant force will be the diagonal. So, it means that here, you draw from the initial point, let's say this is the initial point, huh? or uh, so the diagonal. I'm using double arrow to represent the net force. So you measure this net force, you measure the length, and you refer to the scale. So this one, you cannot calculate it by using Pythagoras theorem. Okay. Um, when we learn about result, resolution of force, then we can calculate. Uh, now, belum. Now it's just drawing. Boleh? Can or not? So just... Follow this, ah, uh, then. Okay, first, ah, uh, choose suitable scale to draw line that represent the magnitude of the force. Then using ruler and protector, uh, draw F1, F2 from a point to form a two adjacent side of the parallelogram like that. Okay, so... Just yes, now, I show already. So, you need to draw one first. Any one. You can start with F2. You can start with F1. Okay. But choose the easier one. So, in this case, the easier one will be F1 because this is horizontal. Okay. Uh, then F2, you measure the angle. Clear? Huh? All right. So, with the aid of pair of compass. Okay. Compass. Uh, complete the parallelogram. So, draw the diagonal from the point. Uh, of action or forces means that here from the middle here from the initial point okay so diagonal represent resultant force then you measure the length of the diagonal and calculate the magnitude okay length and then calculate magnitude using the scale then of course you need to have the angle so the angle okay so this is the angle between the two force forces not the resultant force. Eh? So the angle that represents the resultant force will be this angle. This diagram. Eh? It's either this. Um, so let's say I'm using a symbol theta. So you measure it. Ataupun this angle also can. Okay. Let's say this is beta. Like that. Uh, boleh. So, as long as the angle is in between any side, okay, to the resultant force. Means that it's either from the, the resultant force to the horizontal or to the other force like that. Okay. Either one of these. Repre it represents the direction of the resultant force. Is it clear or not? Jelas? Boleh, huh? Okay. Uh, next one. The same question but using triangle method. Okay. Triangle method is simpler. But, okay. Uh, kejap. Cara sama. First, you need to draw one force. So, we normally choose the easier one which is F1 lah. Okay. So, from here, this is a starting point. Kan, starting lah. Starting and then you draw F1 magnitude. Uh, the length should be the same uh, using scale like that. And then uh, the second force you draw at the end of the first force. So since I start with F1, so this is the first force. The second force is F2. Okay, so I uh, we draw F1 first. F1 first, yeah. 
This is F1. Then F2, you draw at the end of F1. But now you really need to be careful with the angle. Can see here, the angle between F F2 and F1, original angle is alpha, let's say 60. So when you want to draw your F2, make sure you have a reference line. So this is your reference line. Okay, because the angle in between the horizontal and F2 must be not changed, must be the same. So if this is 60, so it means that you need to measure 60. Okay. So your resultant force will be you draw uh, from the initial point to the final point. So this is your resultant force. This one. Can see? <clears throat> so this angle, theta, will be the same as this. Can or not? So it means that this triangle, this triangle is actually the same as this triangle. Which means the angle theta here is the same as this angle. Okay? And you see that we don't change the direction. The direction is still the same. Uh, if you refer to these two diagram, sama, then so it means that this triangle is actually the same as this triangle. So it means that you don't uh, the value of the resultant force that you uh, that you determine uh, using triangle method or parallelogram method will be the same, even the angle also will be the same. Okay. Then, what if we draw like this? Can or not? Boleh ka like that? Can also. This one is actually, you start drawing, start with F2. Okay, we try it. Eh? But that will be uh, a harder. So, I will prefer to start with F1 because F1 is horizontal. So, we normally start with either horizontal or vertical force rather than you use the one that have angle. Okay, katakan you want to start with F2. Eh? Let's say you want to start with F2 following this diagram. I check padam first. Eh? Let's say you want to start with F2. So what you need to do is um, to have a reference line, horizontal F reference line. Let's say alpha is 60 degree. Eh? So you need to measure from the horizontal line. Okay, you need to put one point first as your starting, starting point. Then, um, kejap, check up down first. Let's see like this. Okay, so you need to have your starting reference. This is your reference line. Okay. Um, normally, we use dotted line as our reference line. Okay, next, uh, you draw the angle 60. So it means that you need to measure from here 60 degree. After you measure, then you draw this. So this represents your F2. Okay, then after you draw your F2, that means that the starting point is here. Then you need to draw your F1 at the end of F2. We are using triangle method now. So you need to draw F1 at the end of F2. So it means that you must make sure that your F1 is um, horizontal. So you draw like this. Check to kawarna. See, I'm using red color. All right, so this is your F2. Remember, must be drawn in scale. Then your resultant force is here. This is your resultant force. Can see that? So this is the other half, uh, the other part of the triangle. This triangle is actually the same as this part. 
Boleh faham? Which mean, uh, you can start with any force. You can start with F1, continue with F2, or you start with F2, you continue with F1. Okay, to complete your triangle. That is a triangle method. Okay, whether you use triangle method or parallelogram method, you will get the same um, resultant force. The magnitude will be the same, the direction will be the same. It means that the angle in between the force also will be the same. What I mean is uh, in between the reference. Lah. Okay, so like this, right? Like this just now. Ah. So this angle, katakan uh, like this. Here, right? Here we use beta. So it means that this is also will be beta. Ada soalan? So far? So far can follow? Satu subtopik pun belum habis. No? Alright, next. Okay, we look at this. Uh, so this is a more complicated diagram. Um, uh, showing uh, forces acting on the system. So if you place a book on the table, uh, so there are forces acting on the book. So it means that in this case, this will be simpler. So we call uh, the diagram like this uh, with arrow showing the force acting on the system. So we call this as free body diagram. This is the term that we use, free body diagram. Okay. Uh, this one also free body diagram. This one also the same, right? So when we draw um, forces acting on the system by using arrow and label, so we, we call that diagram as free body diagram. So this shows there are two forces acting on the book. One is pulling downward. The other one is uh, pulling upward. So the, the, the two forces now is actually, uh, what will be the value of the uh, R and W from the knowledge that you have just now? The book is stationary. What can you say about the magnitude of R and W? What will be the magnitude? Which one is bigger or smaller? Yes, anybody? Magnitude, magnitude of R and W. Magnitude means the value of the force acting. The book now is stationary. Ah, betul. Equal. If let's say W is 20 Newton, so R also will be 20 Newton. Okay? Uh, so this is the knowledge that you, you already have. So it means that uh, in this case, uh, the two forces acting... Uh, in opposite direction okay opposite direction parallel but opposite direction okay so the force acting downward here that we label as w okay so this is the weight weight of the book you know the formula already right equal to mg g is the gravitational uh, acceleration m is the mass of the object and then R here is the normal reaction. So the normal reaction normally will be 90 degree to the surface. So here we place the book on the table. Okay, book is on the table. So we are talking about the surface of the table. So W, 90 degree downward. So the force that acting 90 degree upward, okay, from the surface now is known as normal reaction. Okay, normal reaction from the table. So in this case, the book is stationary. So we can say that R will be equal to W. Okay, so that's why uh, in this case, the net force acting on this system, F net, resultant force, is equal to? Resultant force equal to? The book is stationary. Correct, equal to zero, Newton. Okay, huh? Boleh, huh? Okay, next diagram. 
I think we look at this, this one better. All right, so showing the trailer, trailer, trailer direction of motion is to the right. Then uh, maybe we look at the vertical forces first. Weight of the trailer. Sekejap, Cikgu Padam. Okay, so can see here. This is the weight of the trailer downward. And then uh, this is the normal reaction. So we are using the same symbol W and R. Okay, since the trailer is not moving up or down, what can you say about R and W? Correct. Okay. It does not move up, it does not move down. So we can say that the R in this case is equal to W. But is the net force equal to zero? Tak semestinya. Okay, we need to look at the overall. So now there are other forces acting. So you can see you have pulling force. You also have frictional force. Okay, so what is frictional force? Okay, frictional force is the force that always oppose motion. Selalu menentang pergerakan. Always oppose motion. So if let's say the direction of motion is to the right like this, huh? so the frictional force will be acting to the left. And we normally label it on the surface. Uh, on the surface um, in contact. So it means that here we label the frictional force on the ground but opposite to the motion. So if let's say the motion is to the right, frictional force to the left, you draw it exactly on the surface. Faham huh? Uh, if let's say the motion is to the left, so the frictional force will be opposite to the right. Faham? Eh? Boleh? Eh? Now, so if let's say the pulling force is more than, than the frictional force, which direction will the trailer move? To the right. This is just like tug of war just now. Okay, eh? get that basic. Eh? Uh, if let's say the pulling force is the same as the, the frictional force, what will happen? Pulling force equal to fric frictional force. Will the trailer move? Not moving. Not moving. Okay. Uh, from the knowledge that you have just now, yeah, yeah, that, that should be your answer. Not moving. But actually... Um, like this, uh. so let's say I label this as FP, pulling force, and then frictional force, FR, let's say. So if FP is the same as FR, frictional force, the same as the uh, pulling force, there will be two situations. One is the object will be stationary. Another one will still moving, but with constant velocity. Uh, so we will look at this more when we are talking about forces in equilibrium. Okay, uh, but from the knowledge that you have just now, you only know about this stationary. If they are the same opposite direction, the object will be stationary, but there are some more condition. Okay. Uh, more um, move in constant velocity also will get like this. Okay, look at this. Okay. Um, more complicated diagram. You can still see W and you can still see R. But now R and W is not um, opposite. But uh, they are angle in between them. You can see, right? Like that. Okay. Uh, what, number one that you must have in your mind is W. Wait, uh, is always 90 degree to the ground. Where is the ground? This is the ground. Means that to the earth. Okay. So, weight will be always 90 degree to the ground. Then, R will be always 90 degree to the surface in contact. So the surface in contact now is this, the inclined plane. 
So that's why you see R is 90 degree like that. Boleh faham? Boleh kah? And in this case, you see, they, they place another, uh, the wedge here. Okay, so that the trolley bag will not roll downward. Okay, so since here we have another uh, in contact, uh, surface in contact, so there is another, another normal reaction. Okay, like that, 90 degree to here. Boleh faham? So, so we call this uh, diagram, okay, we have R, we have N, we have W. So this is also example of free body diagram, but on inclined plane. Boleh, ha? Okay, I don't want to go into too detail later. Takut you all confuse. Uh, this one also the same thing. You can see, right? So we have the force acting upward and then another force which is the weight and also the, um, the I think, the, uh, the weight of the rocket and also the force thrust upward, the weight of the rocket downward. So we label like that. And there is another force acting which is the A resistance. Okay. Because a resistance here acting just like the frictional force, it opposes the motion. So when the motion is upward, so the air here, right? So the direction of the a resistance is opposite lah to the motion. Boleh faham? So far? So far okay? Okay, yeah. Can we continue a bit more? Alang-alang. Few more pages. At least 1.1 .1 habis. Okay, now. So this one no problem, right? You know already this. Uh, Newton second law of motion is equal, uh, there is a formula F equal to Ma. Okay, Newton second law of motion, F equal Ma. So this Newton second law of motion you have learned before, uh, the acceleration of the object will be uh, directly proportional to force. So the greater the force, the greater the acceleration like that. So that's why your graph become like this, directly proportional. But if let's say you want to plot graph of uh, acceleration, against mass so the bigger the mass uh, what happened to the acceleration the bigger the mass mass lebih besar what happened to acceleration let's say you have a boy running okay lari and then he has an acceleration let's say uh 10 <laughs> Uh, this one sangat laju 10 let's say 10 meter per second let's say uh, 10 meter per second then the same boy uh, run uh, and carry a uh, big box at the kotak besar try to run so will the acceleration more than 10 no right uh, so it means that the bigger the mass when the mass is bigger, the acceleration will be smaller. So it means that like this, bigger mass, acceleration here. Smaller mass, acceleration value will be up here. So your graph will be like this. Okay. Uh, so from here, we know that acceleration of the object is directly proportional to the force, but inversely proportional to the mass. So we combine this, it become um, A like that. Uh, you bring M to the left side, so you have uh, change it, change the proportional sign into equation, so you have that. But of course, you need to have a constant in front. But you can refer back to your form 4. So this constant is equal to 1, so the formula becomes F equal MA. So this is Newton's second law of motion. Okay, huh? Ingat, huh? Okay, we look at these three um, situations situation so number one object stationary number two object moving uniform velocity number three object moving uniform acceleration
um, and the diagram only, okay, maybe we focus on the vertical forces first. So since the object is stationary here, so there is, um, the job, uh, we are focusing on R and W. So the normal reaction and also the weight of the car. So in this case, they are equal, stationary. Next one. So moving in uniform velocity. So there are four forces acting on the system. So this will be the equal. Okay. And then T, thrust, and then FR, frictional. So if the object is in uniform velocity, so T will be equal to FR. And if let's say the object is moving with acceleration, uniform acceleration. So here, this one will be the same because the object is not moving up, down. Okay. Uh, acceleration, so means that T will be more compared to FR. Boleh? Can or not? So far, okay? Now, okay, uh, we look at these two. Object stationary, object moving in uniform velocity. So the equation, uh, kejap, the resultant for summer, right? Zero, here also zero. Look at this. This part summer. For object stationary, acceleration is zero. Object moving in constant velocity, acceleration also zero. Okay, and you can see that the resultant force is zero. Actually, resultant force, we can use this formula, the Newton second law formula, as your resultant force. So, it means that F equal MA. Yeah, F equal MA. This F is actually resultant force. Okay, so if let's say the acceleration is zero, if your A is zero, so it means that your F net will be uh, M times zero. So your F net will be equal to zero Newton. Now, question. So when will A equal zero? Constant what? Okay, constant velocity. Okay, you see, formula for a still from from form four a equal formula v minus u over t. This is from form four. Eh? Now look at this formula. When okay, when the object is stationary. Katakana stationary. When the object is stationary, what can you say about the velocity? Velocity. Stationary. Correct. Zero. So when the object is stationary, so it means that the initial velocity will be zero. Final velocity also zero. So it means that Get this? So when V minus U, uh, when V and U are zero, so when you minus this, you will still get the whole thing as zero. So it means that A divided, A equal to zero divided by T. No matter what is the value of T, so A will still zero. So here, in this case, huh? so A equal zero. If A equal zero, your F net, which is equal to MA, right? Also equal zero because A is zero. Faham? Next one. Next condition. Um, moving. If the object is moving. Okay, moving. Eh? Uh, with constant velocity. Constant velocity. Velocity. If constant velocity, 
it means that u will be equal to v because constant and there is a value. Okay, katakan lah, just give a value. Katakan uh, 20 meter per second. So when you want to use the formula to determine acceleration, so A equal V minus U over T. So V is 20. U also 20. Do you see, do you, do you see that? It becomes 0 divided by T. So again, A is 0 here. So as a conclusion, A will be equal 0. So it means that F net for constant velocity uh, case is still equal 0. Boleh faham? Okay. So it means that now these two cases, uh, that is the reason why the resultant force equal 0 for both object that is not moving stationary or moving in a constant velocity but if let's say the object is moving with acceleration uh, then the net force will not be equal zero so that's why we have this at this island Okay, just like this diagram, this diagram, okay, is this for um, force, uh, net force equal zero or not? This diagram. Is it for net force equal zero ke ataupun bukan? Correct. Bukan. Uh, here, the triangle method and the parallelogram method is used to determine net force, mean to determine resultant force. So in this case, the object is not stationary. The object is not moving in a constant velocity. So it means that the object that, that we discussed for this diagram is actually accelerating. Faham? Okay, we will not be using triangle method or parallelogram method for this case uh, to determine uh, uh, cases where object moving at constant velocity or the object is stationary. Because for object that is moving in constant velocity or stationary, there is no net force. Okay, it means that you can't determine the resultant force. But uh, as you go to other uh, subtopic letter, you will see that there are triangle, uh, there are triangle of forces, uh, and also a uh, triangle of forces for forces equal zero. Uh, that one, cikgu takut confuse. So strengthen this first. Uh, jangan keliru. Okay, we look at the example sikit lagi. Eh? I think about 15 minutes dah boleh siap. Okay, look at this example. So number one, uh, it shows that coconut with a mass of 2 kilogram falling with the acceleration of 9 meter per second per second. Okay, so this diagram. The mass of the coconut is 2 kilogram and it moving with the acceleration. So when you see moving with acceleration, so it means that the net force is not equal zero. So first one, sketch free body diagram of the coconut. Focus on the coconut, just like that. Okay, so we have weight, we have the air resistance. And you must have the arrow. Okay, next one. So calculate the resultant force acting on the coconut. Uh, what is the resultant force acting on the coconut? What formula can we use? F equal, F equal MA, okay, uh, F equal MA. So it means that F equal MA, through the formula. So it means that M is 2 kilogram and then acceleration is 9. 
So 18. Unit mesti ada. So unit is Newton. Uh, so this is the, the resultant force. Next one. State the direction of the resultant force. Direction of the resultant force. Obvious from the diagram can see. The resultant force is? Downward, correct. Okay, so the resultant force, downward. Like that, huh? Next one, so what is the magnitude of the A resistant? Magnitude of A resistant acting on the coconut. Now they give you the gravitational acceleration value. So when you want to determine uh, the A resistant, that is where this uh, free body diagram is important. So this one I label as the resultant force. I put as F net. So now we know that F net is equal to R plus W. Okay. And the value of F net is MA which is 18. And then R is what you need to determine. W formula mg. So it means that here 18 equal r plus mg. m is 2 g given 9.81. Okay so it means that you bring this to the left to determine r. Okay, what is the value of R? One point six two Newton. Okay, if you want to write the direction, the direction of R is actually upward, shown in the diagram. Okay, so from here actually, uh, from here with uh, uh, so here, so here you can write upward, direction upward. Boleh ya? Uh? Uh, so here already have the step, uh? so you can read through. Okay, so look at this diagram uh, showing a passenger with a mass of 60 kilogram in a lift. So you can see, uh, label the forces acting on the system. So we have W, always 90, uh, 90 degree downward, and then R, the normal reaction, okay, will be upward. Now, if let's say uh, the man, let's say the man uh, standing on a weighing scale, Katakan we add in weighing scale here. Penimbang. Eh? Put a weighing scale here. He stand on the weighing scale. Eh? So this R will be represented by the reading of the weighing scale. Because when you enter a lift, when the lift move up and down, um, the, uh, what we call, the apparent weight uh, of the passenger will be varies depends on how the leaf move if the leaf is move if the leaf is stationary the reading of the weighing scale will be exactly the same as the weight of the man but if i say the leaf moving up with acceleration the reading will be either more or uh, it, it can be greater or smaller than the actual reading of the the weight of the man it depends on the direction and depends on the acceleration of the object Okay, so we can use calculation. We can do calculation for this. Okay. Follow this question first. Sketch free body diagram using symbol W to represent the weight of the passenger and R normal reaction. Okay, so that is the answer. Okay, just do like that. 
Next one. So calculate the magnitude of the normal reaction when the leaf is stationary, moving upward with the acceleration, moving with the uniform velocity. So they give you this gravitational acceleration. Okay, number one, stationary. If stationary, uh, then we can say uh, R will be equal to W. Okay. If stationary, so the net force is zero, right? F net will be equal zero. So it means that R is equal to W. This is when the lift is stationary. Another uh, another condition uh, where the net force is station uh, net force is equal to zero is when the leaf is moving with constant velocity. So it means that if constant velocity v constant, no matter whether the leaf is moving up or down, still we will get this. You can memorize that. Okay, so like this, right? Stationary, jawapan will be R equal W. So you just substitute your MG. So M is 60. G is 9.81. So this is the value of R. Here, sama. Okay. Next one. Look at this. As long as you see uniform velocity, no matter what is the value of the velocity, you will still get the same answer as this. Okay, check the answer. Okay. Can see it? Sama. So, a shortcut, nah? when you want to answer, if you see the leaf is stationary, or moving with constant velocity, no matter what is the value, either up or down, the value will be the same as this. Value of R will be the same as stationary. Okay. Huh? Okay, next one. Moving up with const, uh, with acceleration of 1.2. See, why do we have this? Uh, nampak. Why is the calculation like that? And you can see that the R is more compared to the, uh, the original uh, weight. So when, when, when you enter a leaf and the leaf moves uh, um, with acceleration upward, how do you feel? Katakan, you visualize yourself, enter a leaf and the leaf moves uh, in a, a, a acceleration. Do you feel yourself become heavier or not? Can when you enter a lift and tiba-tiba lift terus naik mengejut, so you feel yourself macam lebih berat. Ah, uh, this is the situation. But let's say you enter a lift, then lift pecut ke bawah, huh? downward. Do you feel lebih ringan ke lebih berat? Lighter kan? Uh, we can prove this by using calculation. Okay, I explain how to calculate this. Okay, let's see. Uh. So we need the, the the free body diagram. Okay, perlu lukis first. All right. Um. Cikgu suka lukis ada penimbang. Okay. To remind yourself that R will be the same as the reading of the weighing scale. Okay. Then you label the force acting. So you have katakan uh, this will be downward. Nah. So this is your W. And then upward. Upward, upward. Cikgu suka label like this. Because uh, from the surface. 
normal reaction. Okay. So if let's say the leaf is stationary or moving in, in a constant velocity, the net force is equal zero. So we can quickly write R equal W. That one, memorize it. Hafala? If the leaf is stationary or moving constant, constant velocity. So for this case, um, F net resultant force equals zero. So it means that R equal W. Okay. Now, let's say the leaf is not stationary and not moving in a constant velocity. Let's say the leaf is moving up. Moving up. I draw the direction of movement outside here. And it has the acceleration like that. Okay. So when you want to determine the resultant force, using this symbol, F net. Okay. The tips that you can use will be, first you look at the direction direction upward. So when you see direction upward, so in your mind, you must know that the force acting upward will be greater. So let me say R is bigger compared to W. So you can write like this. R minus W. Okay, because the leaf is moving upward. Okay, yeah. Uh, check good. I copy the diagram first. Okay, next one. So, but let's say the direction of motion is downward, turun bawah. So, how should I write? F net equal to what? If let's say now is downward, so F net equal. Should I write R minus W again? Ah, okay. So if if you see the direction is downward, so we know that this force downward will be more compared to the upward force. So you can write W minus R. W minus R. Okay. Next. So the formula for F net is MA. Just copy. W is equal MG. What it? And then here also just copy. So F net MA equal W. W is MG minus R. So we want to determine what is the reading of the weighing scale, huh? what is the normal reaction. So it means that we want to determine R. So I can bring R to the, uh, um, in this case, I bring this to the left. Same, uh, right, like that. Huh? So it means that R now is equal to MA. Bring negative MG to the left. So become plus. Can see or not? Boleh? Okay. Next one. Do the same thing for this equation. So I want R to become the title. So I need to move this MG to the left. So let me say R equal what? Equal what? Equal? Mg minus Ma. Can you see that? We have two equations here. This is another one. Both for object moving in acceleration, but this is moving up. This is moving down. Nampak? So, which one rasa lebih berat? Naik atas ke turun bawah? Because what I mean by rasa lebih berat means the reading of the weighing scale. Okay, the reading of weighing scale is getting bigger or smaller. Okay, which one you feel lebih berat? 
naik atas right it is proof proven by the formula here plus so it means that bacaan reading of the range scale is getting more lah, uh, 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 greater lah. and then you see if let's say turun bawah you see minus here this is berat sebenar right tolak so it means that when you enter a leaf katakan you are at um, flow katakan 50 50 tingkat 50 you enter a leaf then the leaf accelerate downward so you feel macam ada ringan sikit kan ah so this is the situation accelerate downward tapi sekejap lah accelerate downward then the leaf become uh, after a while the leaf become um, apa constant velocity so you feel normal but if let's say the leaf nak stop pun you rasa macam ada berat sikit R is more, yeah, R is more kalau naik atas, correct. Okay, so if let's say you can memorize, you can also uh, uh, use this method lah. Okay, senang cerita at any, uh, let's say you want to solve problem involving motion like this. Uh, so number one, you need to draw the body diagram, um, free body diagram. So it means that you label the force. Okay, label the force acting. Then number two, you label the motion direction of motion if it is moving up you put arrow up lah okay uh, like that uh, then you write f net equal to you see the direction if moving up so means that this would be bigger tolak ke bawah okay now refer back to the question just now okay so moving upward moving upward with 1.2 meter per second so now moving upward you label direction upward so a equal 1.2 meter per second all right so the formula now become okay right f net moving up so means that r bigger lah, minus w okay so f net is equal to ma you need to determine r so W is mg. Masuk nilai. So this 1.2 is A. Eh? So means that the uh, the mass of the man is 60. So 60, 1.2 like that. R minus 60, 9.81. Okay, from here. So you bring to the left. You get this. Boleh. So the leaf system, it is not hard but uh, try to memorize lah. Ingat lah, uh, stationary or constant velocity up and down, the value will be the same as the original weight. But let's say moving up with acceleration or moving down with acceleration, then you need to use this method. Ada soalan? Okay, do you want to discuss this? This is another one. Sudah tired ke you all? Alang-alang ah, one more eh? I think this is the last one lah. Okay, so this is another system. So you can see trolley on a table and then... Um, uh, tied to a lot and then the 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 string uh, go through a pulley pulley system this is a pulley okay so trolley and then other lot so there is a string here so it means that there will be tension in the string okay uh, we read the question first uh, shows trolley with a mass of 1.2 kilogram pull on a table by lot uh, through pulley and then the lot the trolley move with uh, see here these are the keyword acceleration against friction so this data um, uh, you need to analyze this data to figure out what are the force acting on the system then you need to sketch the free body diagram of trolley and the lot okay when we say uh, free body diagram means that you need to label the forces so they guide you by this 
weight of the trolley, normal reaction on the trolley, friction, tension of the string, and weight of the load. Uh, how to label? So if you look at this, like that. Okay, yeah. so, oh, they use B. Sekejap, ha. So, when we label, lah, yang paling senang will be the weight. So, the weight, we normally draw, remember, 90 degree to the ground. This is weight of the trolley. The lot also have weight. Weight. Weight of the lot. Like that. Okay, next one. Um, in the troll, in the string, uh, there will be a uh, uh, tension. So this one is just like when you hold a rubber band. Katakan, uh, uh, how let's say you are using your finger. Let's say this is your finger. This is your another finger. So the you use your the rubber band uh, here. So let's say you move your finger far from each other. Tarik like that, nah. Uh. So, you will feel tension in the rubber band. So, what will be the direction of the tension in the rubber band when you stretch the rubber band like that? What I mean is, uh, what is the force that you feel on your on both fingers? Which direction will the force acting? You imagine you have your rubber band and you stretch your rubber band. Ah, good. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah, you feel the force pulling inward. Means that you feel the force in the rubber band pulling inward like this. So this force is what we call as tension. This is tension. This is also tension. Okay, so uh, a tension is actually the force acting on um string cable um uh, apa lagi oh benang uh, uh, string is benang sama lah <laughs> tali huh? okay so it means that here you can label the force on the uh um cable uh, string uh. so the direction will be kejap there are two direction class so here there will be like this. This is tension. This is also tension. And then here also you will feel like this. Tarik like this and like this. This is tension. This is also tension. If you zoom in like that. Okay, like this. But if let's say we zoom out. Okay, so we will neglect this. To make it easier for you to draw diagram, we will neglect this. Why? Because W is downward. Okay, so we just need one T upward. Here also the same thing. So we will neglect. Uh, kejap, we'll neglect. We will neglect this. Why? Because there is a friction acting here, opposite to the direction of the trolley. So trolley moving to the right, so friction will be moving to the left. So you can level friction here. This is friction. In fact, if you want to label, katakan you don't want to label at this side. Nah. You want to label here also boleh. Yeah, but I will prefer draw here. Nah, kan sama kan? So this is the free body diagram. Any question? Okay, next question. Compare the weight of trolley with normal reaction. Uh, this one I think should be okay, right? The weight of the trolley with the normal reaction. Sama ke tak, class? Is it the same? The same, right? Okay. Uh, the trolley the trolley in this case uh, is not moving up, down. Eh? So it means that F and R will be the same. 
F and sorry, uh, R and W will be the same. Okay, next one. Calculate resultant force. So, do they give you acceleration? Yes, here. Four meter per second. The mass of the trolley given. They ask you to determine resultant force acting on the trolley. So, just use M times A. So, F equal M A. This is the net force, resultant force. So, you can determine C. Boleh? And then D, okay, tension, uh, determine tension in the string. Oh, wait, 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 uh, determine the resultant force. Determine the resultant force acting on the system. Uh, how to determine resultant force? And this one already, right? Already, the resultant force already determined just now. D, uh, D now is the, calculate the tension in the string. How to determine tension in the string? Actually, there are a few methods. So, this is given in your textbook. Eh? So, resultant force from your calculation just now, you get 4.8 Newton. And then the friction is given, friction is given 6 Newton. Here, you can label in the diagram. So, this is 6 Newton. And then the resultant force just now, this direction, F net, is equal to uh, 4.8 Newton. Okay, 4.8 Newton. All right, determine the tension. Why do they plus like that? This part. Actually, yeah, we can cut this. So it means that we zoom in to this system only. Alright, so F net. Can you write equation here? Sekejap, Cikgu Padam here. Ah, this part. Now we focus on... Now we focus on this part only. Okay. So, can we write an equation? So, F net equal... Look at the motion, look at um, which which force minus which force. Focus on the box that I draw. So F net, now we know the direction of the force is to the, to the right. And we know the value of F net is 4.8 Newton. But if I want to write an equation of the F net, so what minus what? Remember the leaf system just now? Now it's just like the leaf system is being uh, invert, uh, um, rotate to 90 degree. So it becomes horizontal. Mg minus M. You know, focus on this. Focus on the the the... the the box that I draw. So you only have, okay, this direction and you have T, you have FR. Correct. T minus FR. Betul. Okay, because now you see, my tips just now is you look at the direction of the force, net force. Okay, if it is to the right, so means that force on the right will be greater. In this case, is T. T is greater. So T minus force on the left, which is FR. 
So since you know what is the value of F net already, so you need to determine T, right? Okay, friction also given. So F net from your calculation is 4.8. So 4.8 equal T, what you need to determine, minus FR, friction is 6. So means that bring this to the left. Campur lah. Uh, that's why you have like this. Hmm. Here, here, the same equation. Boleh? So that's why I say this is important. Your understanding here is very important. This part. So this diagram can be rotated using the same concept. Just now we are using, uh, this is a leaf system, right? But the leaf system concept can be used for, uh, can be used to solve this problem. Boleh? Last question. Uh, what is the mass of the lot? What is the mass of the lot? Where is the lot? Here, this one. This is the lot. So the mass of the lot now will be equal to a symbol for the mass of the lot will be M. This is unknown. But you already know what is T, right? So there are a few methods. See here. So we need to have this equation. But how? Perhati, eh? So there, there is another box here. Cikgu boleh lukis like this. Okay. Now, the tension in the same string will be the same. So it means that the value of this tension will be the same as this tension. If you know what is the value of this tension, then you can determine, yeah, you, you should know this T. So from here, actually we can write an equation. So T, acceleration, see where is the object moving. The, the system is, is not equilibrium. All right, here, this is F net right to the right. So it means that the acceleration also be to the right. And here, go down. Boleh faham? Do you understand that the uh, um, lot, lot will be uh, falling downward? The direction will be downward? This part boleh faham? Can understand or not? Do you understand this? Why do I write A to the right? Boleh faham this part? Okay, you visualize the system. So when when the lot is released, okay, so this lot will be falling downward. And since they are in contact with the string like this, uh, through pulley, so it will pull the trolley also. But trolley will not fall downward like that. But trolley will be moving to the right the lot will be moving downward with acceleration. Uh, faham eh? So that's why I label acceleration for trolley to the right and I label acceleration for the lot downward. Since they are in contact like this, huh? so the acceleration here and this acceleration will be the same. Same value. Value yang sama. All right, same acceleration, which is given, is it good given? Uh, here, that summer. So it means that here, the acceleration is 4 meter per second. Here also the same thing, 4 meter per second. Like that, huh? Now, I want to focus on this part. So from here, we know that the value of WL, ah, kejap, kejap, kejap. Need to write the equation first. 
Okay. Is there any FNAP for the lot system? Ada FNAP or not? Ada, right? Yeah, because accelerate. So there must be FNAP. So I can write FNAP equal what minus what? For this system only. It will be? Is it T minus WL or WL minus T? Okay, you get it already. So means that WL minus T. Why like that? Because you refer to the direction. Direction downward, so means that WL bigger. So WL minus T equal to F net. Boleh ha? And then F net formula is M. F net is M. M A. Okay. And then WL is mg okay minus t what do you need to determine you need to determine m okay so you already have your a a is 4 g is 9.81 and then t from the previous just now what is the value of t ah uh, this is t okay uh, so cuba masuk nilai try to add in value See what is your M. Okay. Bolehkah? Because the rest is mathematic. Ataupun cikgu buat like this. Ha? I can bring, uh, can bring uh, MA to the left. So means that T sama dengan MG minus MA. Alright, so T is 10.8. 10 Equal M, I bring up, okay, so G minus A. Okay. Boleh? Masukkan nilai lah. So 10.8. Equal M, G is 9.81, A is 4. So you calculate your M. Okay. 1.86 kilogram. Uh, Ryan is more accurate, is it? 4 decimal place. 1.8589. 1.8589. All right. So in SPM, uh, it's good to write your answer uh, 2 to 4 decimal place. 2 to 4 decimal place, okay. Uh, jawapan link Wei Jian correct also 1.86, round off correctly. Uh, yen pun betul, okay. Selamat will be 2 to 4 decimal place. Okay, uh. so I think this is uh, already a lot, right? Boleh faham, eh? Okay, ada soalan. So we already finished the first subtopic. First subtopic. Second subtopic will be you need your knowledge on uh, sin cos tangent. So this is a lot of calculation. Uh, still, you see, masih nampak ada triangle method. Just like forces in equilibrium. They are triangle method. But this is different from what we have learned. Nah? This one is this one is forces in equilibrium. Lain sikit. Um, we can have another Google Meet. Okay, for uh, next, next subtopic. So, ada soalan? Any question? Okay, so if no question, um, uh, make sure every one of your, um, everybody in your class uh, join our physics uh, telegram group. Lah, huh? um, so, anything I will post in the telegram group. Okay, if let's say we have Google Meet, it will be open to all, okay, open to all students of SMK Batu Lintang, means that from Setia until Iklas lah. Uh, because macam uh, for physics department, we have three teachers, uh, I myself, Cikgu Hayati, and then Cikgu Imran, and also Cikgu Jab. Uh, Cikgu Jab now is not uh, well, so pray hard lah for Cikgu Jab recovery, speedy recovery. Um, apa lagi? 
how to join physics telegram. Cikgu ada send, um, ask your friend. Cikgu dah nampak about 100 student already in. Okay. Syakira, kejap, kejap. Ada soalan. Teacher, what kind of question yang biasa kalau involve force ada angle macam luggage diagram. Luggage diagram. Luggage diagram. This diagram ke? This diagram is it? Ah, okay. This diagram will be more on resolution of force and also forces in equilibrium. Uh, this page, uh, Muka Surat 8. So this one is just introduction to you on how to draw free body diagram. Um, question for this part normally come out uh, in chapter 1.2 and 1.3. It will be more complicated. I need Cikgu perlu at least half an hour to explain. So next lesson lah cikgu buat okay, to explain to you all and give you some example of the question. Lah. Okay, uh, this one perlu sabar. This one you need cos sin tangent. Okay, uh, tak apa. Next, next lesson. Okay, ada soalan lain? Uh, I will post this video in YouTube. Okay, cikgu akan post in YouTube so that you can refer to the video at any time lah. Okay, so cikgu better off uh, recording first. So I really hope um, you can understand what have been discussed. Uh, if you have any question, ask. Okay, um, don't afraid to ask. Cikgu akan cuba jawab lah. Huh? Alright, so hopefully... Um, Hopefully semua boleh cemerlang lah in physics this year. 